Have you ever wanted to jump off the back of a boat into beautiful tropical water or have some inkling about it? Today, this course is to see what it could be like to learn to swim and snorkel in the ocean with us. Come on in, I've got some students we met. This is a class for you and to hear what somebody else who's kind of like you has to say. I'll just start with asking, what's your swimming goals and dreams? <laughs> you know, my dream is, I actually have a picture in my bathroom some place where you have to brush your teeth every day, see everything of a woman diving off of a boat into water that is open water. That's like a, uh, that's been up there like 15 years. <laughs> so your Hawaii trip is like, oh my God, could this happen? Ah, nice. That's, How about for you, Shiva? What's your dream? For me, I just get got started out on swimming, just getting comfortable in the water, maybe eventually going snorkeling and scuba diving. But, you know, obviously there's a long way to go before that. But, you know, just enjoying being out in the water and, you know, being comfortable and feeling safe for now. And also having fun, obviously, in Hawaii. <laughs> And having fun, yeah. Well, and it's funny you say, and having fun, obviously. I mean, it might not be obvious to everybody that having fun while learning swimming, they might not, like, people don't necessarily put those two things together because it's like, I have to work really hard, I have to get everything right, and we kind of like, maybe someday I'd have fun. <laughs> So yeah, I love that you put the fun as part of what you want, because that is what we find is you, you have to have it from the beginning. If you've ever heard about people like winning the lottery, you, you have this idea like if I won the lottery, then I would be happy all the time. <laughs> Turns out it's not so true. Like if people don't know how to be happy, even if they have all the money, it doesn't make them happy. <laughs> This is a picture from the first time that we went to Hawaii. We took students and we went to Kona. Since it was our first time, we had a you know big group of people who had been waiting a long time for us to do it. <laughs> so this is us doing the boating trip. So this is some staff and some students. So we stay at Napili Kai, and this is actually a picture from one of the rooms. So the resort is in Maui, north of Lahaina, and you probably know Lahaina. And we were just there in April. And and, oh man, they were very happy that we were there. So it's a beautiful place. This is a sky view of it here. It has this nice bay. And so all of the rooms, you either have a garden view and ocean view or more direct ocean view. And then this little beach area here is Nepili Kai's beach area where you can have them put a lawn chair out for you into the sand and we can watch the sunset from here. What makes this very special is you can see see this kind of rock reef area out in the water so it makes kind of a break and sometimes we do our snorkeling here and then sometimes we walk to another beach that's nearby just kind of depending on the winds and that sort of thing so sometimes this is very very, very common here so we do it here to start with or we walk over to the other beach which is even more protected so it's very common there and so that's the big thing that we're doing is when we get to the snorkeling part we are are finding these different beaches that are appropriate for our beginning levels, right? And so we can be playing around with it. This is one of the pools. So just in terms of the foundation one class, this is beyond where your guys are at. It's I like to show we can start at the zero depth area and <laughs> the, just really learning how it works in the zero depth. Just like we do in the foundation one classes, we spend time on land talking and, you know, going through the mental steps and learning how that piece, like you say, Liz, how can I feel good in the middle? Like what what is the piece that's missing in that? And so that's what we're really doing during our talking sessions. And so this is just another little picture of the oceans out here, the lobby and the rooms are over here. We start at the very beginning. This is a more seeing out into one of the bigger pools. 
So we do take things and we do start in the pool, even with the more advanced group, because we want to just practice this idea of how do I go slow and what are the things that I, anything that I need to review, because I'm like excited and have all the things, right? We always start with these easy containers, right? We have to bring it into this nice, easy container, practice the foundational skills in that easy container, before we go to another container that is a little bit new so that we have something reliable but just the container changes so again this is just another shot of the pool and really where i'm teaching then about the snorkeling we start with teaching you guys the snorkeling in the pool so this idea of having this easy container that you are familiar with and know and shiva after you do a foundation one class right you're going to have more <laughs> understanding of that and then so we teach the snorkeling there and then we go this is a, another one of the pools that they have there overlooks the ocean which is super fun. So this is a deeper water pool where we're practicing the snorkeling in the deeper water pool as well. And then we take it out to one of the protected bays that we're talking about. So we're starting in the nice shallow water. This thing you see here, this orange buoy, we have everybody at the very least, they're wearing their swim buoy. It could be that we're wearing a life jacket or a noodle or other things like that too, depending on the individual person and where our comfort level is. We always want to make it so air is is easy anytime you want and that you feel very safe and secure. The swim buoy, it floats and then it's attached to a string basically and the string is on a belt that you put the belt around your waist. So when you're swimming, it doesn't actually change anything about your swimming because you're just dragging it along behind you. But what it does is it one, makes you very easy to see. <laughs> So we know where all of our ducklings are. <laughs> and you, you know, could look up and be like, oh, there's where my classmates are. There's where the teachers are, right? You can see what's going on because most of swimming happens under the water. And people are like, I want to be above the water so I can see. Well, there's nothing to see above the water. <laughs> but when we have these buoys on, you can see when, you know, th there's somebody further out there. And so it helps us all keep track of the group, but it also makes it so you always are taking a flotation device with you. So if you wanted to hold on to it and to have flotation device with you, like it's not a life jacket because you actively have to hold on to it if you decide to use it, but you have one with you all the time, which is what lifeguards do. If you've ever seen a lifeguard, like a a Baywatch scene and they have their, their rescue tube that they carry, but then they also have this strap that goes over their shoulder. That, that's because, so they can let their rescue tube float along, but they don't lose it. They have it if they need the tool. And so this is kind of operates in the same way. We have this flotation device as a tool. So if we needed it, we wanted it, we have it available and it helps us keep track of where students are too. And I also know nobody is sinking with this on because it is attached to you. So you're you're only ever gonna go down as far as the string is at that distance. So it's a nice tool. It's not even like it's a thing just for, you know, oh, there's the newbies. No, no, <laughs> it actually is a sign of people who know what they're doing. And it, they're becoming more and more, like you're seeing them now in triathlons and you're seeing them in open water events that people have realized because there are drownings that happen in those kinds of situations and they don't like to talk about that but they do happen and it's starting to become the norm for open water swimmers to be wearing them and to use them so we like to have our students do it, it makes you guys all look advanced if you feel advanced or not <laughs> So just another picture, she's in the real shallow area. We're starting people in the real shallow area until we're comfortable with all of the equipment and how does the equipment work? How does it work for me to be in moving water? How can I come back and be calm when there's this, uh, a new dynamics going yeah. on, right? Yeah. It's a different dynamic. How do I maintain my presence of mind here when my vision and view goes, there's this whole big open ocean that I could end up in, right? But how do I stay self-contained? And that's what we're really practicing when we're in the ocean and have fun. This is our group that went a year ago, April. And this was our advanced group that we had there as well. Can I ask a question? Yes, please when do. When you say advanced, what does that mean these people 
are comfortable already with? That is a great question. So anybody who has gone through a foundation one class. Okay. So Liz, I would want you, since you're not doing it with us, I would want you to go through the online material and okay. do it, the online version of it. Okay. And just based on the things that you're telling me that you know how to do in the water, okay. I would just want you to go through that process to break some of it down. By what you're saying, we will be able to get you in on the mental steps of it that you yeah. haven't really had a chance to do. But you can do the physical steps steps. The physical things that people need to be able to do to be advanced mm -hmm. is you need to be comfortable putting your face in the water. You need to be able to float. I can yeah, do that. My, yeah, you need to be able to float on your front. You need to be yeah. able to float on your back and you need to be able to stand up from both of those. So that's the minimum physical requirements that we oh, need yeah. to have to do it. When you so, say stand up, are you talking about like in a pool with a bottom on it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Okay. Because you don't stand up in deep water. True. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. no, it's a good question. Huh. <laughs> what do you do in the deep water? So this is where, Liz, I would want you to make sure you go through the foundation, okay. the online foundation course. Okay. Because the question is, if I'm not getting my safety from the bottom, where do I get my safety from? Yeah. And it turns out you can practice this and work on this in a shallow water pool, but it's shifting the mindset of where that safety comes from. You have been giving your safety to the bottom and to the side instead yeah. of having it come from you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we need to have shift. Yeah. Also, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just no, I go really for want it. to do this. So I've I'm trying to get all my anxiety See? out. So yeah. not only the sides and the bottom, but something you mentioned, which is water that's moving. You know, it has its own mind. This is like, <laughs> that sounds basically really to me, that's another aspect of discomfort. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want the water to stay still because I'm trying to go over there. Mm -hmm. So when I know that there's things like, I took a sailing trip with some friends, a 10 day sailing trip in the British Virgin Islands with my whole fantasy of jumping off the boat. And I was with friends who are good swimmers and everything like that. So I did it, but I didn't jump off because they would say every time they went in the water, well, the current is strong. And I'm like, no current, no current, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So moving water that has its own boundaries, uh, that's really anxiety provoking. Sure. So the question then that we want to be asking is what is, again, it's about this safety. What is it that keeps me safe? Yeah. There are two things that we need to be safe in the water. Do you guys have an idea or a thought about what they are? You have to get air. Ding, ding, ding. You want it. <laughs> That's one. What's the other one? Being calm. Yes. What Both is it? stars. <laughs> he said being oh, calm. Oh, being calm. Oh, by the way, yes. We have to get air. We have to have access to air. And we have to have access to our emotional state. Yeah. Because when we don't have access to our emotional state, in other words, when we're freaking out, you mm. might have air, but you're freaking out. So then you're doing things so you don't realize that you have air. You're doing things that are blocking you from getting more air. Yeah. Right? So those are the two things that we need. And we need those if we're in two feet of water. We need those if we're in 20 feet of water. We need those in still water. We need those in moving water. Yeah. And we can have access to both of those things in all of those situations. And moving water is actually not as much of a problem as us being afraid of moving water is a problem. For sure, yeah. Because it turns out, you know, if this is the shore and this is away from shore, that the water functions the same here as it does over here. Yeah. It's our mind that functions differently. That's where we get into a problem. Yeah. And so that's that piece that we need to add to our learning to swim equation. And Liz, because you do have physical swimming skills, we need yeah. to add that mental component to it Absolutely. for you. Absolutely, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we're working on as much as we are, you know, the other things. Again, we start in the pool with that those foundational things things and then it's just changing the playground is what we're doing in terms of moving to the ocean. The big fun benefit of moving to the ocean is that you're more buoyant yeah. than you are in a pool. You float that's what better. They say. <laughs> I know I that's on. what they say but we do have to prove it to ourselves. We'll yes, prove it yes. in the, you know and the other thing that is nice about the ocean is there are interesting things in there that like distract our brain. 
Oh my gosh, there's the fish! Here I am with the fish! Oh no! It's so fun! Like, I was worried about all these things, but look at the fish! Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing that, you know, the pool could get a little boring. <laughs> interesting and exciting in the ocean so the other thing that we do with the advanced course is it is a more expensive course than the foundation one course because we have all the equipment it includes like your snorkeling equipment your wetsuit we do usually have it's nice to have a little extra warmth in the ocean and then we do excursions so we usually take a boating trip out to Molokini crater it's an island that is now it's like a half moon island and nobody lives on it but the inside part is all coral reef and so there's lots and lots of fish you can swim over it to see it or you just get in off the back of the boat there's fish like as soon as you get into the water and it's just this beautiful clear amazing water there if you've watched any of the youtube videos and you see us jumping off the boat that's molokini that's what we're doing there and so it's an opportunity that people can do that the biggest expense difference on the advanced course is because of that boating trip because we hire a private charter so that we're not getting in with a whole huge group of people where they're just like everybody get in everybody get out we're like okay we're here we're gonna do this our way like we're gonna take our time getting in we're gonna go explore if you want to get up and take a break you can get up and take a break and you can get back in again if jumping off the boat is something you've wanted to do we're gonna go through those steps and literally hold your hand <laughs> that's <Yay>. uh, yeah <laughs> for the jumping in so that private charter boat that's our biggest expense extra expense so that's why if you've looked looked at the foundation one that's the extra cost that's in there so yeah when you do the class the program fee covers all of the programming you know the cost of having a staff out there and all of our rental equipment and all that kind of stuff it doesn't cover the hotel the resort that's in addition and the flight of course but we, do, we always get a you know a discount on the room other questions Thoughts? Yeah, about the um, online foundations course, mm -hmm. I hesitated to take that because I wasn't quite sure how you do that when you, in other words, I'm going to look at, I'm going to get things to do, and then I just go do them until I'm comfortable, and then I come back and get the next thing to do. Is that, yep. that's me? Okay. Yeah, and it's all stuff that I already know that you can do because you have done them, but it's not stuff you've done with a certain mindfulness perspective okay and that's why I want you to go back and okay. do that and take that new fresh perspective on it yeah and there's a question form after each of the lessons like you watch a lesson go do a lesson fill out the question form I actually look at them and I will okay. comment back to you and I even okay. will make a little video that's like Liz great I love this now did you think about this or this sounded really great you know I'll yeah. make a little video personal to you yeah I am the one that's watching it's the cheapest okay. private lesson you're ever going to get 19 bucks okay. a month to go through it okay. <laughs> okay. yeah you just go through step by step like that and you can give me your observations and you ask questions new things will come to you when you do an old thing in a fresh way Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Where are you now on a scale of one to 10? 10 being, I am in. Give me the link. Let's go. <laughs> I am ready. Got my credit card in hand. I'm calling the airline. One, no, this is not for me. Not my thing. Glad to hear in on it, but I've got other things in the world to do. Wherever you're at on there, if you're not a one, if you're something a little bit higher than a one, wishing you were a 10, maybe you're not quite a 10, but if you're somewhere, if you're a two to a nine, let's say, what we want to do on those is we want to ask ourselves, huh, what would it take for me to be the next number up. And I'm not saying this just because I really want you to come, but I'm saying it for yourself. This is how the learning process goes, is you want to look at whatever it is that your worry, your concern, your objection is, because this is how learning happens. This is how we advance ourselves. So when we're in the water and people are saying, I wanna get in the ocean, but I'm not a 10 about it. We say, perfect, let's open ourselves up to that and get curious. What do I need to give myself to move myself to the next step? Because if you took the time to watch this course, 
If you've took the time to think about these things, I know it's something you really want to do. You really want this. And so we want to help you along the way to see what is it that we need to do from wishing and hoping to actually being in action. We want to take that most scared, that most tender part of yourself and say, hello, I'm going to be here to take care of you. I'm listening to that part and I'm going to take care of that part. You know, when people say, oh, it's money or it's time, those are just things that are problems that can be solved, right? If it's something you really want to do, you can solve for that problem. Budget the money, ask for the time off, whatever it is, right? Those are problems that we can solve. We solve for those problems all the time in life for things that we really want. So if it's something you really want, you can find a way for solve for those problems and you're still not a yes. It probably is something in a fear, something in a way of not believing in yourself or not believing in us or somewhere in there. That's what we want to look at for yourself, for your own growth. Whatever it is that holds you back in that zone, in that area, is likely a similar thing that holds you back in other parts of your life. Let yourself be open to that and for us to solve and find answers that get you into action for those questions there. It's not just going to help you on your swimming journey, but in all areas of your life. If you're not sure how you go from maybe to a yes in this particular area, look to another area in your life where you were unsure, but then you did change to a yes. What is it that helped that? What confidence did you have to have in yourself or belief that you needed to have in order to go from a desire to, yes, I actually did it. Use that information to come over here. I'm not saying you have to do it. This isn't a high pressure sales, but just to help you see the process to go from a life that you're wishing for to a life you're actually in action doing, moving closer to, exploring and being that person, being the swimmer, being your future dream right now. Whatever those things are, if you need help with them, ask me. These are the things to be in communication with another person to help you move yourself to the next step. We don't want to just be spinning in our own heads. We actually want to move ourselves forward, which means taking some sort of action. So if you're a 10, you know your action. Grab the link, go sign up. We can't wait to see you. <laughs> If you're something in between, give yourself some space to be curious, then give us an email, shoot us a message through social media, respond back to us. And so you're being in action. You're getting those questions, you're getting those concerns, you're building your belief in yourself and us, whatever it is that you need to help yourself take your next action step. This is how we create big and beautiful lives of our dreams. Hey, thanks for being here today. Thanks for showing up for yourself, for taking this action step. You're different with some new ideas today, and it is a beautiful and amazing thing. I can't wait to see you online, in Hawaii, in a pool, hearing about your dreams and helping them come true. Aloha.